Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Tuesday the 10th of July 2018. This is episode 15. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. How are you guys? Um, we are in a different location this week because it is summer break and um, children are in the living room where I normally record. And um, in general, the my room is the only room on this level of the house. It's a, a split level-ish sort of deal. So you can actually see right here, this is a hallway that leads to stairs. And then up the stairs is where all the other bedrooms are and the living room, dining room, and kitchen. So this is the quietest place in the house. Um, so that's why I'm recording there. I'm sitting on the floor. I have stash here projects here. This is a completely knitting related shelving unit. So that's exciting. Knitting, spinning, crocheting. Um, anyway, it's been, I don't, I can't remember. I'm sure that I have not recorded in July since I'm pretty sure my last podcast was when my kids were still in Kentucky with their dad or Ohio. He doesn't live in Kentucky anymore. Um, so it's probably been about two weeks, right? So with that in mind, I drew two more winners for the All the Small Things Knit Along. And the winners are, um, for, po for number 94, entry 94, Philippa MC Mitered Squares Post 61, and um, number 113, Nicole S. Mitts, and that was in Post 82. Um, I posted my last episode, but I did not post it to Ravelry, and um, it had a weird bleh with YouTube when it went up, so I'm going to say the last episode's winners too, um, which was Philippa MC again for Miters, and that was number post, hmm, I don't remember, I can't remember if it was post six or number... Let's see. Okay, so it was entry six, post 13, and um, entry 99, which was post 79. Let me make sure I'm saying that correct. Yes. For Mama C, for some mitered squares. Hi, what's up? Can I get the broom and dust for you? I don't have them down here. They're upstairs somewhere. Okay. I don't think I have them down here. Did no. You cut that part. They're upstairs. Uh, I probably will cut that part. <laughs> Actually, I might leave that in. Um, anyway, so yes, Philippa can pick two prizes and let me know what she's interested in. Um, actually, probably pick three just in case someone else gets to me first with what they want. And then Mama C and Nicole, let me know what you're interested in. I will, again, um, be mailing all those pr prizes out. All of the knit along prizes will be mailed out in August um, so that I only have to make one trip to the post office because finding child free time right now is very difficult. So I only want to have to do it once. Um, what else? Oh, other thing is I released a pattern. The pattern is called Rebound and it is the second pattern in the Helicoid Volume 1. And I knit it using. Leading Men Fiber Arts Showstopper in London Fog and Nooch Fiber Midtown Sock in Unresolved. So I really, really like these Intarsia socks that I'm doing. I think that this one was really, really fun, really cool. My testers liked the pattern. So thank you, testers, for being awesome. And I am going to do a giveaway for a copy of this pattern, but it's going to be on Instagram. So I apologize if you're not on Instagram. Um, my glasses are really crooked. Uh, I'm sorry if you're not on Instagram, but that is how we're going to be doing this particular giveaway because what we are going to do for the giveaway for this pattern is I have a pretty big basket of whips, not whips finished objects. Pretty big. And 
I have not been weaving in ends. So I am going to say that the giveaway, I'm going to run it on Instagram and it is going to go from July 11th through July 20th. And you can have one entry per day of weaving in some ends. And feel free to be a cheater about it. If you want to start a project and get it to a point where you can weave in that beginning end, totally acceptable. Just weave some ends in and you will be eligible to win um, the a copy of Rebound. So yes, I am pretty excited about that sock pattern. I have um, more about the helicoid um, patterns to tell you about later. I'm sorry, I'm so discombobulated <laughs> being in a different space and having the boy walk in a couple times. So yes, um, I would like in those posts for you to tag whatever hashtag I put down at the bottom because I haven't decided yet. Uh, there will also be an Instagram story about this and an Instagram post about all of this. So if, uh, if this isn't clear enough, which I'm sure it's not, feel free to check out Instagram for the rules on how to enter to win that. So finished objects. First, the first two, counting them separate. Um, I don't have to show you. They are currently in use. So before Tour de Fleece even started, because happy Tour de Fleece, we're kind of, we've just started Tour de Fleece. We're pretty early in it. Um, I finished a skein of yarn, the Apothecary Fiber Company and Phoenix Fiber Company combo spin that I did. I finished that and I had about I had about 162 yards approximately somewhere around there. Um and I started the night before Tour de Fleece started. I started crocheting the Woodland Wolf Cowl by Heidi May which is a pattern that I've made before, but this time I made some modifications to it because the pattern says to work from the um, cowl edge up and I had a sneaking suspicion that I would not have enough yarn to do all of the cowl and everything if I did it that way. So I started from the, the top edge and worked my way down and I ran out um, there's a hood part and then there's the cowl part. I ran out right at, after I connected the hood part. And so I was talking to Haley. We were Instagram chat stuff -ing, And, uh, I asked her if she thought that some leading men fiber arts that is actually Gabriel's, um, would work the colors would work. So I had a um, a part of a braid of Leading Men Fiber Heart Arts. I think it was Pullworth. I don't remember. I didn't check my Ravelry page where I have all of my stash information. Um, but I pulled out what was there that Gabriel hadn't spun yet, which was still a pretty significant chunk because Gabriel likes to craft, but only for very small portions of time. And I always let him have nice materials because... I want him to like crafting, but you know, I'm, I'm not going to get upset if he doesn't want to do it all the time. That's fine. Side tangent, my niece totally used the entire skein of yarn that I taught her to crochet with. She made, um, an ear warmer thing for my sister. She made fingerless mitts for herself. She made a little pouch using some of it. And now she has another different remnant that she's using. So that's really exciting, but I don't have any of that to show you. But it happened, and I'm really excited that she likes crocheting. She still has the project bag that I gave her, which was my Sewn by Lindsay pink tetrahedron bag. And um, she has only lost one crochet hook now. So that's pretty good in 
over a month, right? Yeah, it's been over a month since I taught her how to crochet. And I am really good at losing crochet hooks. So only losing one, that's pretty good. Anyway, back to the spin. Um, so yeah, I had pretty significant, I don't have a scale, so I couldn't weigh how much I had, but I had that fiber. And then I also had a mystery um, white fiber that came with my wheel because Lorraine had it on a bobbin and then she didn't want it back. So I was like, well, I'll just wind it off and hold on to it and maybe use it for something someday. So that day happened. So I got about 50 yards out of that and I used it to make the ears. Um, and then I continued on with the cowl and also on the ear ears, you found a dustpan. Good job. So the ears. I did the outside of the ears using that second hand spun. And then I also used some uh, Hometown USA, Lion Brand Hometown USA. My basket's right up there on the other wall on a different shelf. I used like a salmon-y color. I don't know what it is for the inside of the ear. And then I got some like a dark gray, light gray marl from Haley in the package that she sent me last month. And then I used that for the outside of the ear because you, um, you do two triangles and you put them together. So for the putting together part, I used the dark gray. And then when I ran out of hand spun on the cowl part, I went until the gray ran out basically. Um, I, I used the second hand spun for there's like a ribbing around the opening of the hood. So I used that and then I did not go as long on the cowl as the pattern called for, but I finished anyway because I was out of gray yarn and I didn't have anything else um, compatible in my stash and I didn't want to go and buy something for this. So it was fine. It's long enough. It looks really good on basically everybody. So yes, that was a success. My nephew has been wearing it nonstop since his birthday, which was Sunday. So it's only been two days, but he's currently sleeping on our couch right now, wearing the hood, even though it's like 80 degrees in the house. We don't have air conditioning. So I think it's a success. He loves it. He turned 13. So that's also pretty cool because even though he's not too cool for a hood, I'm waiting for him to be too cool for things. What else do I have finished? So let's see. I have some long stripy socks. Da -da -da -da. So the stitch markers that are on here show you where I was on either sock last time I talked to you. Um, I think the final I'm going to do some on-air math, so if you're counting, feel free to pause that. Okay, I'm going to do some on-air math. So I had 59 stitches on the front and 57 stitches on the back. Nope, not 50s, 40s. 49 and 47. So that is 100 minus 496 stitches around for the for the cuff up here and then down here it was just a little bit smaller it was so what was this 96 so this would have been 94 stitches around for the the top part of the leg it's a lot of stitches to finish a sock so these rounds went slower <laughs> you know having almost almost 60 percent more stitches um on them but look at how cute they are I love them and I will love them so much when the weather turns cool and I can wear them over leggings um, the pattern is not on Ravelry but there are similar patterns where you just do um, knit two together yarn overs where the yarn color changes I did make the decision up here to not do that on this final color change between the orange and the purple um, on these two sections because the orange 
at that circumference was like one and a half to two rounds instead of the um, three to four rounds that it was down here. I dyed this yarn myself using Kool-Aid and food dyes and I did it in such a way that they would be matching, completely matching all the way down and that the stripe repeat would be irregular and that the stripe um, widths were irregular also. So I'm super pleased with how this turned out. And then I did ribbing on the back once I got to um, where I started doing calf increases just to make sure that it was snug um, because I didn't really measure the, I didn't try on my socks a lot when I was doing the calf increases. I, so I wanted to give myself a little wiggle room for in there. I also finished the Walk the Block Mystery Knit Along. The pattern is, I don't think the final pattern is released yet, but all of the clues are out. The Knit Along period is over. The prize has been awarded. Um, not to me, sadly, but it's fine. I enjoyed the Knit Along, so I'm going to show it. And mine is, um, I did not use the kit that you could have purchased for the mystery knit along. I used um, penguin soup mini skeins in the Hogwarts colors, Harry Potter colors. And then I used another crafty girl uh, Sesame Street colors mini skein set and then I also used random mini skeins for my mini skein collection as I ran out of colors for specific sections. I did a few modifications. Um, I will try to remember what they are and let me show you first though the finished um, shawl. So here it is. It is very big. I have not blocked it yet because weaving in of the ends, which I'm going to do in the next week and a half, all of the ends for all of these projects are going to be woven in before the 20th. So look for that on Instagram. Okay, so still going, still going. There's different sections, um, different textured sections. So you can see there's a mesh right here. Oh, it's two o'clock. This is called the flower stitch. There's a lot of garter. Um, this is a fun manipulation of garter stitch right here. And then, ba -dum, ba -dum. so first thing, since I remember it right now, the um, this little section right here is knitted after, and then you're supposed to mattress st stitch together. I am not good at mattress stitch because I haven't practiced. I could be good at mattress stitch if I put in the time, but I don't. So I opted to do a hybrid mattress stitch and graft because I love Kitchener. I will Kitchener anything. So um, instead of binding off like the pattern said, oh, my leg is falling asleep, excuse me. Um, instead of binding off like the pattern said, I just left these stitches live and then did a a half grafting, half mattress stitching thing that I learned how to do when I made the Frankenstein socks. And um, pleased with how that join turned out. I also ran out of yarn here, so I, for this last section, so I finished this section with the color from this section because I knew I was going to be grafting that together. So I think that makes my join look even neater. Not that you can see what I'm showing you. Um, what else? This section right here is two different mini skeins um, from my stash because I ran out of yarn. I made the, um, I used color three in section one for less garter ridges than was specified for. Yeah, I did all sorts of little modifications that I'm not going to list on my project page and that I'm not going to enumerate here, um, but it is finished and the ends just have to be woven in and it is super long and super colorful. I like the, 
I like the yarns and I like the colors, but I am never going to wear this. I'm just not. Because I know me. You know what I wear? Black and gray. So that's like 90% of my wardrobe. This is a navy dress um, that I don't wear out of the house because it has a hole right here. You're welcome that I'm wearing my house cleaning dress for you because that's what I was doing. And then I was like, oh, I could podcast. So it did not get changed for you. Sorry. That's why I look a hot mess. But anyway, so I was working on this and I was like, I don't, I'm not going to wear it. I really like it and I don't have a problem with it. I just wasn't going to wear it. And I was like, well, who can I give it to? Because it's a lot. It's long and it's a big thing. And I was working on it. And I was working on it at a craft day that I had with Mary Lee and she looked over and she's like, oh, who's that for? What is that? I really like that. I was like, really? You like that? Because Mary Lee also wears a lot of black, but she wears colorful accessories. And I was in this, I was in this first part that's just, this is all color so much color she was like yeah I will totally wear that to festivals because she goes to festivals I was like okay that makes sense so this is going to be for Mary Lee and it's beautiful and I will um, try to remember next time to show you a blocked photo of it once it's all you know extra beautiful so that's another finish I also finished the um, the blue version of the design blanket. So this is the wrong side. So you can't see the design. But I did finish all of the corners and ends have to be woven in. Um, so I did finish that design blanket, which will be coming September, October-ish time. Um, my test knitters are still working on it, which it's a blanket, so it's going to take time. And then this is just in there because I put all of the things that need ends woven in into this laundry basket so that they wouldn't get lost. My most exciting, most biggest finish is the chunky miter blanket. So that's the wrong side. Um, I'm not going to pull the whole thing out to show you. I have a picture that kind of shows you. The finished object it's huge um, it's not huge huge it covers the top of my queen size bed and hangs over a little but this is this is it finished and I just did a um, a little not quite a fan edging but a little bit of a tiny fan edging so I went around this blanket is knit it's a knit mitered square. This is driving me crazy. I need it to to not get to not fall down on me. Anyway, um, it's a mitered square blanket. You can find a ton of tutorials on how to make a mitered square on Ravelry or just on the internet. Um, and then I single crocheted around the entire thing. And then I did. What did I do? I did slip one, skip one, single crochet. Does that look like single crochet to me? Yes. Four, and then skip one, slip, uh, slip stitch, and then slip one, single crochet four, all the way around. And uh, did I say the single crochet four was going into one stitch? So that's what makes this little bump thing. It is finished. I have not a giant supply left of the um, Hometown USA, but a decent portion. However, I have a pretty good chunk of it that's red and then some other colors that I think are complementary enough to that to work for a tree skirt. And the tree skirt that I picked for my, um, what was it, Make 9 2018, I actually looked at it to see if I could maybe modify it to be a chunky weight thing, and you can't get to the pattern. So, 
I am going to kind of reverse engineer the pattern based off of pictures that are on Ravelry using the Lion Brand Hometown USA. Um, it's going to be a tr crocheted tree skirt. I might start that this month because each, um, it's made in panels. So each panel would count as a finished thing. And then I could, you know, have that ready well before Christmas. So that's a thought. I do have one more finished thing though. Tangents. So this I finished plying this morning. It is the Jehovah Jireh Woodmill fibers that I had um is that a half ounce of each or a quarter ounce? I think it was a quarter ounce each of three colors. And I spun those as singles and then um you can you'll kind of be able to tell that I'll show you here, but you'll have to look at the picture, which I'm sure is somewhere over there. Um, I got pretty far with all three of them. And then I ran out of two plies almost simultaneously. I think it was like one yard apart. Um, so I had this brown, uh, I think it was a South down wool in my stash. So I quick spun that into singles and let it rest for an hour or two and then started applying that and then I still had not a ton of just green left but enough to make what's this probably two yards three ish yards of chain ply using just that green I don't have a project plan for this I don't really like making monsters and toys and stuff, but I kind of just want to make a monster or a toy out of this hand spun because I think it'll be so cute. So that might happen for this. And then works in progress. Like I said earlier, it is Tour de Fleece and I have a, um, a little giveaway thing going on Instagram. Again, it's an Instagram only thing because pictures... Um, so the giveaway is every day that you participate in Tour de Fleece in whatever way, some people are just processing fleece, some people are dyeing fleece, some people are spinning or plying, whichever way you're participating in Tour de Fleece, if you tag your post for the day with hashtag BPHTDF18, then it will be considered for the prize, which will be a pattern up to $8 US, giftable through Ravelry, um, so that you can make something fun with your new hand spun yarn. And I am not going to be like super picky on what counts or what doesn't count. You don't have to spin a minimum requirement as long as you're taking part in the tour. That counts. And, um, if I draw, because I'm going to use random, a random number generator thing for the Instagram posts. If I pull my own post, then instead of redrawing, I'm just going to award on either side of my post. So the post before and the post immediately after, those will be getting the $8 giftable pattern through Ravelry. So... I think that's pretty exciting. Let me show you what I'm working on for Tour de Fleece. I have silk on a bobbin, which I will put in a picture here. And I'm actually almost done. I think I'm going to finish spinning the single tomorrow, which is insane because I've been working on that silk for a really long time. And for a really long time, I was fighting with it. I didn't know how it wanted to be spun. It wasn't talking to me. I did not do any research. It's mulberry silk. Um, so I didn't know how to spin it. And I was trying to, I was kind of trying to spin it from the braid because that's what I normally do. Um, but what I found is that it doesn't like that and it likes to be spun from the fold so i've been spinning it from the fold and i think before the tour de fleece started i had spun maybe a third that's being generous but maybe a third of the braid that i had 
and in the last several days, I have spun almost all of it. Hi, Surreal. That's very annoying. Sorry. Um, I have just a little bit left. I am going to finish the single tomorrow. I'm not going to apply it on itself. Um, I actually started forever ago spinning some silk hankies that were dyed by Jenna from 716 Knit. Um, I won those in, I'm pretty sure it was a hand spun knit along that I hosted. Or maybe it was a hand spinning thing, like a making hand, it was either making hand spun or using hand spun. I'm pretty sure it was hosted in my group. And I won the prize because people said that I could win the prizes. So um, I never put my name in for my own knit alongs unless people are like, hey, put your name in because you should win. Um, and that's only, I only do that when other people are donating prizes also. So if other people are donating prizes and they say, hey, be part of your own knit along, then I do that. Um, but for a normal knit along, I don't. Anyway, so I have these beautiful silk hankies that I am spinning on a um, supported spindle. It's a bead spindle that Lorraine brought back from, I think it was Maryland Sheep and Wool, but I don't remember. It's somewhere back in my backlog of episodes. I started it maybe two years ago for Tour de Fleece. Uh, maybe a year ago. No, I'm going to say two years ago. And I haven't really worked on it very much since. But since I'm going to finish this silk tomorrow, I think on Thursday, I might put that into rotation and just spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes on the supported because I am super out of practice and I don't want to make myself hate the process. The the blue silk is kind of a sky, sky blue color, and the rainbow hankies are rainbow, so I just thought it would be really fun to ply them together and then make something. P.S. I don't even know what people make out of silk. What do people make out of silk? Give me some ideas, because I might give away this hand spun, but I might want to keep it for myself, because it's not very good, which is why I wouldn't want to give it away. Um... That whole learning curve was really, really bad. So probably going to keep it for myself, but maybe not. But if I do keep it for myself, I'm going to want to knit with it. What do people make out of silk? In addition to those three spinning projects I've talked to so far, I have two others. Um, ah! So my tour de fleece goals, let's talk about those really quick, is I wanted to spinish, spinish, kind of like it, the apothecary fiber combo spin and stuff, which I finished before the tour. I made these goals on the 1st of July. The tour started on the 7th. So on the 6th, I finished the apothecary. So that was one. Um, number two, I wanted to finish the um, gourmet stash, which I've worked on a very, very little this tour. No, I haven't even worked on it this tour. I've worked on it this month a very little. So I have this on the spindle. And then I have this much left of this little sliver. And then I have two slivers left. And then all three of these slivers need to be plied. And I have probably 30 yards left to be plied from the last little bit that needed to be plied. So I'm super close on this. The tour finishes on the 29th. I should be able to spin these singles and ply everything if I just make sure to work on this, which I haven't done in the past three days. That's so bad, but I'm going to. Um, I wanted to finish this, so those are the three things I wanted to finish. So I have one left to go of the three things that I want to finish. Um, I can't remember if I showed you why I have this in here. This box came padded because it had glass bottles in it, so, or a glass bottle and a stopper, so that's why I keep this in this little box because it's a golding spindle, which I can't replace if it gets broken. 
Do to do, and it's the perfect size. And it travels really well in my bags. So that is that spinning project. I also have this, this spinning project that I've had forever. So long that I can't remember if I have a first turtle of this or if this is the first turtle. If I have a turtle of this somewhere, I don't know where it is. Because the I have a four ounce braid in this Stitch by Just Lou bag um, that I am spinning straight from. I'm not pre-drafting at all, even though it's been sitting for forever. This was from a 2013 club that Hippie Penguin, yes, Hippie Penguin and uh, Mary Gail Spartacus dies did together. And Hippie Penguin dyed the fiber. I have two braids of it because Haley didn't like it. Um, so I, th I think this is the first turtle and I've been spinning on it forever because I started it in Kentucky and I haven't lived in Kentucky in a long time. So my goal is to do 15 minutes on this and 15 minutes on the silk every day. So again, once that silk is done, that's going to open up more time to work on other things. So other spinning projects. Um, so yeah, that should be, this should be fairly, I should be able to at least finish this turtle. Um, I'm going to probably, unless it gets too heavy, spin out to where this blue line is. And then remove the turtle, which is a lot of layers still. But at 15 minutes a day, that shouldn't be a problem. And that's all the spinning that I have. However, because I am a um, I'm a carrot person. I'm not really a stick person. You know this thing, carrots versus sticks. Some people need rewards, and some people need the fear of punishment. I don't really care about sticks, honestly. I'm like, oh, you're gonna you're gonna do what to me? I don't really care. There's consequences for my actions. Oh well. But you're gonna reward my behavior. I get a thing at the end of this. <gasps> That's me. So I told myself that once I finished two of my spins during Tour de Fleece, and I have one finished, that I could start a new spin. I'm not counting the apothecary fiber as part of the spin because I finished that before the tour. Um, so I have, again, up here, over there on that wall, I have a, a little basket that has four different spinning options in it. Um, and I'm going to start one of those tomorrow, probably, because I'm going to finish spinning that silk single, which totally counts because I did not have the silk hankies out as part of my tour de fleece schools because um i didn't think i was going to get through the silk <laughs> honestly i really thought i was going to finish this tour with the silk still on the wheel but i'm not that's so exciting so yes next week there will be a new spin i don't know which one since i had to go deal with children anyway um i grabbed my bin before i sat back down and I have this 60% superwash merino, 30% bamboo, 10% nylon braid of fiber. It's four ounces um, and it's from Deviant Stitches and the colorway is our endless numbered days. So that's pretty gorgeous. I also have these um, smooth batlets. And the colorway is Dark Side of the Rainbow. They have faux cashmere, merino, and silk in them. It's three ounces. And I don't know the dyer. Hold on, I'll find out. It is Naturally Knitty. Um, I got this from the ZK when I went, what was that, three years ago? Four years ago? Forever ago? The last time I went to the ZK, I picked these up. Um, if I... So... I'm probably, well, let's talk about this. I'll probably throw this on a spindle if I started the little batlets, even though, of course, my wheel would be faster. But um, I find that batlets prep works really nice on spindles, so I would probably do that. This would go on my wheel. This is my 
rainbow merino, which I think I would do on the wheel, maybe, probably. I think this would go on the wheel. And then I would um, probably chain fly that on the self. Okay, so I really like the rainbow, but now I kind of think that I want a neutral color to be, um, to go with it instead of chain playing it on itself so that I can get a longer color thing. So that's going to be put to the side. I'm not spinning that one. My other option is um, spinning this Polworth, which is a green color from Chamomile Collection. Um, it's 3.2 ounces. Spinning this as one ply. Spinning this, uh, this is, I don't know who this is from dyer wise I know that Josh sent it to me it is merino it's about two ounces and it is in the what is the character's name I can't remember it should be on my Ravelry page so these I would do one ply and then ply together uh, yeah, so I don't know which of those three I'm going to do because I'm not doing a rainbow right now. Um, but I'll figure it out tomorrow or the day after when I start that. And then back to works in progress. I have two knitting works in progress. I am not planning on casting on any more this month. Um, not any real projects. I do have a couple small things that I want to work on that I might start, um, I want to make a little heart ornament. I want to, and I want to crochet two um, four and a half inch circle things for the center of, um, what is this called? You can't see what I'm looking at. Dreamcatcher. So my best friend makes dream catchers, and she made one for me, and now I want one for each of my two kids. Um, but I have lace weight yarn, and I thought it would be really cool to crochet the center of the dream catchers. So anyway, I might start those, those this month, but I might wait on those three things until next month. Depends on how the tour de fleece goes, and it depends on if I finish both of these two knitting projects, which I feel like I could. But I am focusing a lot on modular knitting, so maybe not. Anyway, so first up is the last design in the um, helicoid design set. So you can see my yarns here. I have two very beautiful yarns. I have first up from 716 Knit. It is a self-striping. Um, I specifically wanted a self-striping for this design. So I am super excited. Uh, this is a colorway that I have loved forever. I love Jenna. She's great. If you haven't bought stuff from 716, you should remedy that. She has great self-striping, very cool speckles. Most of her colorway names are based off of um, quotes from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, yes. Do that. Did I say that this one is The Girl Makes Godot Look Punctual? Which is... Obviously a Buffy reference, but can I help you? Um, I'll come back. Okay. Uh, Waiting for Godot is a play. It's an American play, and I can't remember. I can think of two different playwrights who it might be. Molly! I can think of two different playwrights who it might be, and I don't want to say the wrong one, so I'm just not going to say either. Uh... But if I remember correctly, it's two guys sitting on a bench having a conversation waiting for Godot and Godot never shows up. So that's why that reference is funny. And then this is a 20 gram mini skein um, by Miss Dyer. It's from a bundle that I got at Kentucky Sheep and Fiber. I don't remember who the dyer is. I will put it at the bottom of the screen, though. And I will hopefully have the tag next time I record so you can see. So, yes, this is the third and final installment in that collection. It is an intarsia in the round sock. Uh, if you are interested in test knitting, it would be a kind of a quick turnaround. 
but I don't need an entire sock knit. So I don't need a pair knit even. Um, I just need part of a sock knit to make sure that it works. Um, so if you're interested, let me know. I think they're going to be super, super cool. I'm really excited about this. I really like all the designs in, the, in this collection, but this one's my favorite. So I'm super excited. And that is in my um, Fates thread bag, my Sailor Moon bag. And then in this bag, which I don't remember who it's made by, Haley told me and I forget right now. I should put a little written note in the bag so I can tell you. I want to say knit one crochet too, but that might be wrong. So I'm sorry if that's wrong. Um, I have <laughs> I have my other work in progress, which I've just barely started. Um, I was going to knit it last month and then I did not. So this is going to be the highway driving mitts. I have the cast on in one round done. I'm going to work it two at a time, which I haven't done in a long time. I haven't done a two at a time project in a couple months. So I'm going to do that. Um, the pattern is by Tanya. I wrote down your last name. Probably going to mispronounce it. Sorry, Tanya. Sigurdsson. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Um, she is super active in the Bunnyfish Crafts Ravelry group and fantastic. And I'm super excited to be making this design by her. So I am, I'm in love with this yarn. It is beautiful and it has gold Stellina in it. And I'm not normally a Stellina person, but I'm so excited to have these mitts for myself for this winter. The yarn is by cattails yep. cattails yarn and it is superwash merino 75% 20% nylon 5% gold stellina in the naive colorway from the wheel of time collection these mitts are going to be so gorgeous i love this yarn so so much i really love both of my work in progress yarns so so much which is exciting because Let's be honest, sometimes I work with yarn that I do not love, but that is not the case today. Um, so yes, if I get these two things done, then I'll start other knitting and crocheting projects. But mostly, I'm sorry, I just kicked the basket that you're propped up on. Uh, mostly going to be focusing on crochet, not crochet, on spinning for the rest of the month because it's going to be tour de fleece. And I will do, because I did not do last time a modular check-in, I will this time. Um, I looked back and the next thing up to check in is barn racing squares and I actually have a lot of them. I've done many of them in the past several months. So this is an opal yarn. And I think this is a drops yarn. It's from a long, long time ago. Part of the fun thing about working with, uh, working through the small things knit along is that I uh, I pull out scraps that have been languishing for a long time. And then this is Shockstar. This was a mini that someone sent me. This is Leading Men Fiber Arts Gothic Gothic Queen that I knit the Gothic Spire socks out of for a sample. This is, oh, speaking of Leading Men Fiber Arts, if you're going to be stopping by their booth at some point, um, they have my Rise Over Run socks, the first pattern from the Helicoid um, collection. They have that in hard copy that you can buy, and you'll also get a coupon code for a downloadable Ravelry copy also so there's that in your life just throwing that out there this is a croy stripey yarn uh this yarn i don't know what it was i got it from Haley, i think who got it from someone else and it didn't come with a tag to Haley. and i asked to someone else and they told me and i forgot 
but I made a pair of socks that were a test knit for Jenna of 716 Knit. I like how a lot of these yarns have stories. Um, not all of them do, but a lot of them do. This is an opal. Um, the two opal yarns that I made, they are the only opal yarns that I've ever used, and they were in little tiny um, My First Opal skeins that I got from my friends at the ZK. This is a Croy colorway that I made. Did I make the wolf pack socks out of that colorway? I think I did. This is the um, Knit Picks Red Wing Blackbird colorway. I made How Come That Blood out of that. Mm, I love this. This is Marigold Jen in the colorway that she dyed specifically for the Cog in the Machine shawl that I made. And I can't remember what the colorway is called right this second. I'm the most horrible person ever. <sighs> It was a darker, dirtier version of sidewalk chalk is what I wanted. Um, something patina, I want to say, is what the color was called. Yeah. This is another Croy. I don't remember what socks I made out of that, but I just made them at the beginning of this year. This is a Red Heart Heart and Soul. I made myself socks on a plane out of this yarn. I don't know the colorway, but I want to say it's guacamole. I made two Red Wing Blackbird squares. Apparently I did. Oh well, that's fine. I'll just put them on opposite sides of the blanket. Yeah, normally I'd be like, oh well I could just give one away, but I don't actually know anyone else who's making a barn raising square blanket out of Everybody who I know who's making barn raising square blankets, they're making them out of specific dyers. So I'll just keep that one. Or maybe I'll frog it and use it for something else. Who knows? And then this is Leading Men Fiber Arts in Cherry Blossom and All the Way to the Bank. These are the yarns that I used to design Rise Over Run. Yeah, that was a pretty big, that's a pretty good pile. Um, totally because of the small things knit along. That's why there's so many barn racing squares made right now. Okay, I think that is all that I have to tell you <laughs> until the next time I see you. Um, I hope you made something fantastic with your sixth and string, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!